Who wouldn't want to have motivated employees? Having a motivated workforce is essential for many reasons, such as the productivity and performance levels of employees, alongside the general morale of the team. This video investigates Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs as a theory of motivation with supporting examples of the model applied to McDonald's. In 1943, Abraham Maslow released a paper named A Theory of Human Motivation, which implied that as humans, we naturally strive to fulfill five sets of basic human needs, and we are programmed to do so in a particular order. This concept is well known today as Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Right at the top of the hierarchy is where Maslow believed we can achieve our full potential as humans, naming this stage as self-actualization. However, Maslow argued that we must first address our fundamental needs to have any chance of progressing through the hierarchy, starting with what he referred to as physiological needs. Following these physiological needs, Maslow believed that we also require our safety, social and esteem needs to be met before we can eventually become self-actualized. In the modern world, these same principles can be applied to businesses to effectively support the development of their employees and allow them to reach their full potential, which in turn will help the business to succeed. Let's have a look at each stage in more detail with supporting examples of how Maslow's hierarchy of needs could be applied to McDonald's and how they aim to motivate their employees through use of the theoretical model. So, first of all, right at the bottom of the hierarchy is the physiological needs, referring to the basic needs of humans which are typically vital to our survival, including food, water and shelter, just to name a few. A good example of physiological needs being met by McDonald's is them providing staff with a free meal whilst at work, ensuring that they have eaten and are hydrated which helps them to focus in their role as they are more likely to have increased concentration and energy levels, therefore maximising their performance. Also, McDonald's provides employees with a standard uniform which is based on their role and supplied free of charge, so they don't have to worry about purchasing clothes for work. Now, one of the most obvious ways in which McDonald's supports their employees to meet their physiological needs is to ensure that they pay the minimum wage, as being able to afford to live, eat and pay the bills outside of the workplace is one of the main reasons most people are motivated to work initially. Moving up the hierarchy, the next stage is safety. Safety refers to how safe and secure an individual feels according to two main categories, health and wealth. Having a safe working environment, which does not put employees in danger, and one where they are treated with respect, whilst receiving fair pay for their service, are all important factors in this stage. The pension scheme offered by McDonald's to its eligible employees allows them to contribute a set percentage of their wage to their future pension pot, which McDonald's also contributes to, providing employees with a sense of security in their future retirement income. Another example of McDonald's meeting the safety needs of employees is the guaranteed levels of holiday and sick pay it provides. Whilst these are legal obligations, they still contribute to the employee's safety needs being met. Furthermore, the use of flexible scheduling provides employees with the opportunity to develop a good work-life balance, whether this be for parents working around childcare commitments or students working around their studies. All employees can make flexible working requests via an online platform. Job security, alongside fair pay, which could be referred to today as the living wage, are also crucial factors which contribute to the basic needs of Maslow's hierarchy of needs being met. However, McDonald's approach to meeting both of these came under scrutiny in 2019, when McDonald's employees went on what became known as the Merck Strike, within which employees protested against low pay and zero hour contracts, demanding wages of £15 an hour, guaranteed hours and an end to youth rates arguing that the current rate of pay and variable hours meant that they were sometimes left unable to pay the bills, therefore impacting their physiological needs. So, once the first two stages of the hierarchy, which are collectively known as the basic needs have been met, 
we can effectively progress to what can be known as our higher level needs, starting with social. Social needs are based on our natural desire to feel loved, accepted and wanted. At this stage within the hierarchy, positive relationships between employees and the business are crucial. A sense of belonging is pivotal. Feeling part of a team, creating friendships and forming professional relationships all play an influential role in social needs being satisfied. McDonald's views people development as a very serious matter, which effectively makes employees feel wanted and invested in as people, which in turn increases their loyalty and commitment to the business as their social needs are met. This is evident in their learning and development strategy, which plays a huge role at McDonald's and is promoted as a key benefit of working for the business. They believe if employees want to learn, develop and further progress their career, then they will be provided with the opportunity to do so, regardless of their length of service, role or contracted hours. Another factor supporting McDonald's employees to meet their social needs is being part of a clearly structured team. Whether their role is customer facing, in the kitchen cooking the food or even the distribution centres, every employee is part of a team which allows them to build positive relationships and a sense of belonging. Near the top of Maslow's hierarchy is the need for self-esteem, which is linked to the feeling of being appreciated and valued, whilst effort and achievement is duly recognised, providing an individual with a sense of self-worth and pride. At McDonald's, every employee has three separate performance reviews within their first year, and every six months from then on allowing employees to truly understand how they are performing and where they need to develop as individuals. These performance reviews not only allow employees to be praised for their efforts and their achievements, which in turn then increases their self-esteem, but they are also linked to an annual pay review, which increases the focus on personal performance. McDonald's also use recognition schemes, such as Employee of the Month to acknowledge and appreciate individuals' efforts and achievement with the aim of increasing their self-worth and pride. Another strategy to boost self-esteem amongst employees is the service awards, within which employees are rewarded for their continued service and loyalty to McDonald's for a recognition and reward scheme, within which employees can receive retail gift vouchers which can be worth up to £1,000 for employees who have worked for the business for 30 years. Right at the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is self-actualization, which Maslow believes to be the stage where a person achieves their full potential as a human being. Essentially, they have developed their craft, nurtured their skills and stretched themselves to a point where they are at their peak and doing everything they are truly capable of at that moment in time. However, it is important to be aware that a person rarely stays in a permanent state of self-actualization, as it is an ongoing need for personal growth and discovery. Put simply, what makes a person self-actualized at one point in their life may be completely different to what makes a person self-actualized later in life, as their desires, attitude to life and personal circumstances change. At McDonald's, the opportunity for promotion not only acts as a motivator in general, but if achieved, Promotion can be the reason why an employee progresses to the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and becomes self-actualized for a period of time. An example of this could be an employee who has worked for McDonald's for a number of years in various roles, undertaken lots of different training and development opportunities, finally achieving their ambition of becoming a manager. This is the story for 90% of McDonald's managers who started at McDonald's as crew members and work their way up the career ladder due to the emphasis of McDonald's internally promoting employees rather than recruiting externally where possible. At this point, when the employee is fulfilling their potential and working at their full capability, they have the potential to become self-actualized. However, it's important to note that becoming self-actualized for employees of any business, not just McDonald's, isn't just solely centred around promotion and a job title. It could be achieved through job enrichment and taking on additional responsibilities or leading on a challenging project. Anything 
that provides an employee with the opportunity to fulfil their potential. Now that we've looked at each stage of the hierarchy and some examples of how McDonald's as a business potentially supports their employees to progress to the point of being self-actualised, it's very important to consider some of the key advantages and disadvantages of the motivational theory. A key advantage of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is it being a very straightforward and logical model which is easy to understand and apply to a given business, effectively allowing a manager or the owners of a business to identify any missing elements in their employee engagement strategy. Following this, human nature is taken into account and the theory carefully considers the correlation between our needs and wants as human beings and the impact of these on our levels of motivation, emphasising the importance of meeting our basic needs before anything else can be achieved to maximise performance in the workplace. However, humans are very complex and not every employee is going to be motivated by the same factors. In fact, each individual employee is likely to be motivated to a different degree by each stage of the hierarchy. For example, certain employees may be highly motivated by the basic physiological needs, but have no desire to have other factors such as their social or esteem needs to be met due to their personal circumstances or preferences. Whereas other employees could have completely different reasons for coming to work, it could be solely based on having their social needs met. Therefore, they never strive to become self-actualized, so they aren't motivated by money nor progression opportunities. Therefore, to ensure all employees remain motivated, it is important that businesses get to know them on an individual basis to clarify what motivates them personally and why they come to work, rather than just assuming and applying a blanket approach. A final factor to consider is the difficulty managers face when trying to measure which stage an individual employee is at within the hierarchy and the impact of them satisfying certain needs as it is subjective in nature. So that's it, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I hope you found the video useful. If you have, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Two Teachers YouTube channel for lots more business studies content. Thanks for listening and all the best.